All right, well, thank you for joining us here today. My name is Joseph Guillory. I am the Senior Recruitment Advisor for the full-time programs here at Pepperdine and Grazadale Business School. I'm joined here by uh, my co-moderator, Shani Mahalu. She is the Director of our part-time programs, and she will be assisting me here today on our moderation. Our topic today is the business degree during a global pandemic. It's a thoughtful, thoughtful leadership panel discussion explaining why now is the best time to pursue your business education. So please join us while we invite our faculty members and industry experts to share their classroom insights, their career and business school advice, and real world industry experiences as you explore options for furthering your education. Now, in this session, our faculty and alumni will share information about our Bachelor of Science in Management, the full-time and part-time master's and MBA programs, and how they can change your career trajectory and provide new opportunities for growth, professional development, and a sense of purpose despite the global challenges of the pandemic. So as we begin here today, I wanna to start off with introductions. Uh, we'll start with our professors of the uh, Pepperdine Grazidio full-time programs. I'd like to take this time to introduce Stephen Rapier. Uh, if you could please just introduce yourself, uh, share a little of information in your background, and a aha moment that you gained uh, through your time and experience while here at Pepperdine Grazidio. All right, thank you, Joseph. Um, I actually come from industry. Uh, I've been a senior level executive in uh, marketing, advertising, market research, and PR. And uh, started my kind of my pathway down academia. When I was 26, I was invited to guest lecture at USC and kind of did both in parallel, both career paths. And I've been here 13 years and I'm the lead course developer for the core marketing class online, as well as another uh, elective global brand management. An aha moment is we don't have enough churros um, on campus. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a serious problem. <laughs> churros are delicious. I, I feel your pain there. Thank you for the question. Uh, Larry, please, uh, yourself in a, an aha moment and a little bit of your background as well. Sure. Uh, so <clears throat> I've been in uh, academia for about 30 years now, teaching entrepreneurship the entire time. Uh, I've been fortunate to be here at Pepperdine for 12 years and have uh, been able to participate in designing the entrepreneurship curriculum. So especially if you're interested in starting a business, if you're interested in entrepreneurship uh, or innovation, creativity, that's what we do. That's what I teach. And uh, not really an aha moment, but probably a very significant thing is uh, that you should know is that uh, actually um, my son attended this program. So when he decided he wanted to do an MBA, I told him if he was going to study entrepreneurship, there was no other place where he could go that would, sell, that would do a better job of teaching him entrepreneurship. So he came to Pepperdine and um, had, had him in class, which was really a unique uh, kind of a fun situation. And now he's out and uh, doing some management consulting and involved in a startup. So uh, uh, very glad to be here, uh, anxious to answer any questions you might have about our program, about entrepreneurship, about you know, how we might help you. And uh, I'll turn it back over to Joseph. Thank you guys. Thank you professors for being here today. I think our students will definitely find your engagement helpful. Now on to our alumni. Uh, we have two students here today that have graduated our program. In fact, our Bachelor of Science of Ma Masters um, and the MBAJ program. So I definitely wanna give a chance to introduce those two students. Uh, let's start with ladies first. Uh, let us know a little bit more about your background, um, when you graduated the program, and what you're currently doing now. Yep. Hi, my name is Nadine Tapia, and I'm a recent graduate of both of those programs, which is very exciting for me. Um, I've been in the personal care industry, so skincare predominantly, uh, for the last 10 years, but um, have also worked in fragrance and color cosmetics um, and skincare over the last 25 years. Um, it just seems weird to keep on saying more and more years every time, but it's been that long. Um, and I am now launching a clean skincare uh, product. So I, we're a startup. And um, in just the last, probably last month, we've um, developed a skincare that's been sent out for sampling. So that's very exciting. Um, and I guess my aha moment at Pepperdine is that I went in for, you know, to, to kind of just refresh myself in um, 
just the new approach to sales and, and marketing and entrepreneurship, but I really left with a super awesome um, group of friends um, and also just a network that I'll have for life, which is very exciting. And I've had both uh, Larry Cox and Stephen Rapier um, in classes. So this is very cool to be here today. So thank you for having me. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Juan, how's everything going for you today? Very good, Joe. Um, Juan, I graduated from the BSM MBAJ program in 2012. So it's been a while since I've been in the classroom, but I think my journey, I mean, it really took me from being an entrepreneur for I guess at that time, about 15 years, and then deciding to get my MBA degree, going back to school, which was the biggest aha moment of going to class for the first time in, I don't know, probably over 20 years, and feeling those butterflies that really, you know, made it feel real. So there was a sense of reality that just sunk in, and I realized, oh my goodness, did I make the right choice? But, you know, three years later, finishing the program, writing my degree, making a ton of new friends, and people who I can always call upon or email and text for advice. That was when I realized that I made the right choice. Right now I'm working in the recruitment for the executive MBA program here at Pepperdine. And I'm glad to be a part of this wonderful and impactful purpose-driven uh, organization. Wonderful, thank you. And uh, again, we have Shani Mahalo. She'll be here as well. Um, again, she is the director for our part-time programs. Again, I wanna utilize the chat. If you guys have questions, um, you can go ahead please and type them there. Uh, we'll answer them again at the last 10 minutes with our Q&A session. So moving right along, uh, the topic of this entire conversation is, is a earning a master's degree, an MBA degree, is this a right time? Is this the right fit to do it in the midst of COVID-19? Um, so I wanna turn this question to our professors and um, you know, why is this a good time for our students uh, to be happy and engaged about pursuing an MBA or a master's degree. Let's we'll just wait. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Well, if I could start, um, I think especially now with the times we're in with COVID and all the changes that that has implied upon in businesses, I think now is the time to really learn about uh, options, alternatives. How do we deal with this from a creative perspective? How do we overcome it? How do we move forward? And so rather than not going to school and, and not being part of that conversation, if you were to join a firm, you know, a year from now or two years, like when you would graduate, you wouldn't have that basis, that, that kind of the, the discovery session that you would have uh, between your classes, uh, the professors, but also your classmates. And so that's how we all learn. Nothing's perfect, but at least you feel like you are in a position that you can understand what's going on and you are you have an, a sense of engagement you want to deal with it you want to go forward you don't want to hold back uh, because you're not that certain so larry yeah yeah so that's a i agree with you what steve just said i, I also think that um it's interesting during times of uh, like this where there's a lot of turmoil and a lot of uncertainty in the environment uh we find ourselves sometimes in a position where we have extra time and we have uh an extra uh, incentive to look at something new. And maybe maybe what we've been doing isn't working out or maybe what we've been doing is part of that uncertainty. It's a great time to re-examine and to uh, start a new path and try something new. So, so this could be just the perfect time to go back to school. And from an entrepreneurship perspective, uh, uh, echoing what Steve said, entrepreneurs, what entrepreneurs do is um, uh, take an uncertain environment and, and create certainty in the middle of that environment, find a way to uh, make it work. And that's what we teach. So, so doing an MBA and learning how to work within an uncertain environment, especially if you're looking at entrepreneurship, it, it makes a lot of sense because it's really the only way forward. I can't think of an, uh, an environment less certain than what we're looking at today. And uh, so you need new tools, fresh tools, fresh ways of thinking about business and your life. And, and that's really what we're, we're, uh, what we're providing. Greatly said that, Larry. And uh, this next question is for you and then I'll get your thoughts, Stephen, afterwards. What do you guys feel separates Pepperdine University from other grad schools in terms of community, um, the actual curriculum, the overall package? Uh, what do you think is a big indicator why Pepperdine is the correct choice? 
Well, I, there are a lot of really great things about Pepperdine, and I, I uh, the Grazio School is is uh, I got a lot of uh, things that you can you can promote and talk about that make us different. For for me, and this is because I I live and breathe entrepreneurship. Um, I think about our entrepreneurship program, and and having been in this industry teaching entrepreneurship for thirty years, I've been in six different universities. Uh, I've been around, I've seen a lot. I, I've never seen a curriculum as good as this one for helping people launch businesses. So if you have any interest at all in starting your own business, even if you don't want to start your own business, but you want to learn about how to face uncertainty and how to move forward, this is the place to be. I think we have the best curriculum I have ever seen. Uh, and I have seen a lot of curriculum. So um, this is the place to go for that. So I feel, I mean, for us, one thing that's different from the different schools I've lectured at, um, I was an executive at different companies, but, you know, like guest lecturing at different times, was it was really more of an applied environment. So much to what Larry is talking about, an entrepreneurial spirit is not just starting a company. It actually is something that is very useful, even within your own role, whatever that role is, at a company, and how you deal with daily or weekly uh challenges that might require some innovation on your part. A lot of the faculty members do have professional experience. It isn't like they just got a PhD, read a couple books and say, here we are, I'm gonna read the textbook to you. And it's also small class sizes, which I think makes everybody more comfortable to feel like they can contribute and be engaged during that classroom experience and not feel they're in a room with 100 or 200 people. And they're just sitting back listening to you know, somebody just got a lecture on. Yeah, it's interesting. You should say not read a, not read a book to you. Uh, I literally, when I started my master's degree, uh, I was in a class where the professor, uh, instead of lecturing, read the textbook to us, and uh, <laughs> and it, we got through two chapters in a semester. It took him that long to read, and he, and he would put he would uh, he had laminates, so he would take the the actual text and he would put it up on the screen and we would read along with him while he read to us. And, uh, and I thought, oh, what, a, what an colossal waste of time this class is. <laughs> and it was clear that he just, he had no clue what people really wanted or, or you know, like that. And, and there just isn't anybody here anywhere close to that kind of, uh, um, of teaching where we're, we, we, we're training really more than we're teaching, so. Yeah. I almost think of it as being in-class mentoring, yeah. right? that we, we look at these students um, as those that we would like to guide. We have this vicarious sense of enjoyment in seeing them succeed, seeing them learn. That's a great feeling. I mean, that's really why I'm doing this. Yeah. I really kind of want to pay forward, you know, with my experience. I had mentors when I was younger in the academia and so forth. And I wanted to be able to bring that back into the classroom. And this was a good, a perfect setting for that. Another point along that is we have a, um, a really strong alumni network. And so each, um, each week, I, once a week, I hear from an alumnus who is talking about a business that they've started and needing help. I've got um, two appointments tomorrow with alums who want to talk about their business idea and, and moving it forward. So we, we really try to commit to the students to continue in the long term and to help them with their issues way beyond uh, uh, class. This one gentleman contacted me, he graduated in 2010. So now it's 11 years later and he's, and he's still in touch with us about how, how we might help him start his business. So we're very committed to our students uh, long run. Well, I'm happy you guys shared that. And, and I think this is perfect fitting time to have Nadine aboard because you just recently graduated. I know your story was that you know, you're coming back into college and, and the university and be able to do school. So can you explain how the classroom environment is for students that you know, might've gone out to the workforce and now they're coming back? You know, what has the expectation been for you and, and you know, what was your experience? Well, for me, um, the, the reason I went back uh, was because I was kind of out of the, I was an executive for many years and then I'd, I'd left the company because it was sold. Um, we saw it through a transaction and things had changed in the years that I had been out. So, you know, approaching the consumer was completely different. And I knew that there was a lot of differences and I knew I had to learn those differences in order to really be effective. And what I wasn't expecting, cause I actually was, to be honest, it had been so long since I had been in school, I was expecting the textbook thing. So for me, um, 
it was really eye-opening to see a different way of learning. Um, not only was I inspired for the business that I've created, but um, I was also inspired for the other aspects of, you know, businesses that I have. So I also invest in real estate and that's, you know, some passive income for me. And it inspired me to take what I learned from entre the entrepreneurship courses and also even the study abroad um, experiences that I had, which we have a plethora of them at um, Pepperdine and was able to really apply that to not just uh, the consumer products industry that I'm in, but also into other aspects of my businesses. So that for me was eye-opening. And of course there's key learnings in each one of the classes that um, we had. And I will say the smaller classrooms are very important, especially if you're you know, someone who's coming back to school um, because like Juan had said, you do feel a little apprehensive at first, you're a little nervous. So you, you want to be able to build, you know, the friendships and the networks to, you know, work together because there's also real life outside of, you know, the school hours. So, um, it's nice to be able to lean on other people in the, the, the classes and also the professors. It was mm -hmm. such a fantastic experience. I am like a Pepperdine billboard. So you can ask me anything you want. I love it. And you have to say also, Joseph, that uh, Nadine, Nadine was a student who took, um, took advantage of every opportunity that came through the classroom. So each speaker that came through, everything we did, she, she maximized her experience the best she could. And it was, it was amazing to have her in class. I'm sure Steve would say the same thing. Uh, Nadine was a great student, an ideal student for what we do. That's a great point. So I'm, I'm happy you spoke about the ideal student. And this brings me to the classroom environment in terms of teaching perspective. If you're a business school and you're looking to start the program, what can you do to prepare yourself to be successful in the program? You know, from an attitude standpoint, um, from a, uh, a starter mentality standpoint, can you guys just give us some thoughts on, you know, what helps to be a, make a well-rounded student? Steven. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think the best advice I've ever received is one that I can pass along to you. And that is, I think that you need to be as enthusiastic about your interests as others are about theirs. And by doing that, people, the right people are encouraged and excited to hear about your ideas. And even if it's not the same interests, um, that gets, that makes you much more engaging in the classroom, both among your peers but also with faculty and staff. And by doing so, you're naturally prepared to learn more, right? And progress farther in the program um, than one who kind of starts the program, they're not too sure, which is kind of sometimes normal, but then you're sitting in the back of the room, you don't talk, you're not really, you know, engaging at all. And I think you're doing yourself a disservice uh, in that you're not fully reaching out um, to really capture uh, this. It's like going on a cruise and just staying in the bottom deck. Oh. And, you know, think about the Caribbean I've been to. If you've never been out on the deck when you're on the, in the Caribbean or on one of the islands, no matter how many books you read, like Larry was talking about, you don't really understand what, what that's like until you're on the island. And I think that's something that would be, and that's the advice I received when I was younger, and I got invited, one of my mentors was an academic, uh, but he was also on the board of Taco Bell and Home Savings. And I get invited to a dinner. He's, and so and then I hear about who's coming. And I go, what am I gonna talk about? There was Joe Kalum who founded Trader Joe's, one of the founders of Lockheed, a director from the Rand Corporation and so forth and so on. And that was exactly the advice that he gave me, which I think is really well, well founded. Larry? Yeah, I uh, don't have a lot to add to that. I think that that for me, um, you know, there's there's an ideal student that that some programs have that has to do with GMAT scores and GPAs and you know uh, those kinds of things. And I don't I don't think that is really what we look for or really all that important. At least not to me. Uh, what I look for are, are students uh, just like just like Juan and just like Nadine. I, I I look for students who are hungry, students who are who really want to learn something and, uh, and are really taking charge of their own education. So all I, all I do is facilitate that. All I try and do is 
help them along that path on the journey that they want to take and help them to get to whatever the goal is that they have for this, uh, for their, for their life. And, and so this, they're going to have to be self-directed. They're going to have to really want to learn. And, um, and for the most part, I have to say our students are that. I, very rarely do we have a student where I think they're just killing time or they really shouldn't be here. Uh, when they come, they're hungry. And that's, that's really the ideal student for me. And this next question is for Juan. Uh, since we're on the, the conversation of student, can you talk about the peer relationship when you're actually in the classroom? Like, what is diversity like? Um, you know, you were just coming back as well, getting your MBA. What type of students are in the classroom? And is it a nerve wracking situation? If you don't come from a quantitative background, how are you going to fit in? Like, can you just explain, you know, how the process works within the program, you know, from a, a peer relationship setting? Right. Uh, when I look back at, I guess my earliest memory is uh, organizational management behavior class. So I took OB. Um, new class, new experience, didn't know what to expect. But I saw that there were, especially during the introduction, you get to learn a little bit about everyone's background. And you realize that you're not that far off from one another, even if there might be some age gaps here and there. Um, everyone has an idea or a goal of why they started this journey of earning their bachelor's or earning their MBA. Um, I realized that, you know, this, you know, diverse pool of students eventually became good friends after that first week. And then going off for our, our you know, hotel weekend where we actually got a chance to really bond and create these new experiences. Every time you step in the classroom, that's when you get a chance to create a new experience. And that's what is going to create a new habit in your life of doing assignments and readings and taking tests and quizzes and so on and so forth. But you'll realize that this isn't a, a, an opportunity of just doing things for myself, but then you'll have that opportunity to support your fellow classmates. And you'll also get that warm feeling that they're gonna be there to support you too. They'll be the ones that, hey, I need you to finish your part of your report. Um, are you ready to study this, this test with me? Um, what are you gonna do next term? What class are you gonna take? you'll start building these rapports and bonds. And that's what got me to keep going on this journey. You know, in other parts of my aspect of life, if I didn't like something, I would have quit and just move on to the next next chance or next opportunity. But because of this relationship and, you know, with some of them, I'm still in contact with them on a weekly or monthly basis. Sometimes, you know, a little bit too much, but, you know, now we're all here down at home. I'm kind of feeling a little nostalgic, <clears throat> so. You'll get there, you'll enjoy the experience. I think it's about breaking out of your comfort zone and developing the resiliency and the openness to change because that is what this world is about. It's about the effective change that you're taking care of every day. You might think it's the same thing over and over again, like a rinse and repeat type of life, but there are nuances, there are changes that are affecting you and who you were yesterday will not be the same person as you are tomorrow. And I want to keep this question for you, Juan, um, in, in terms of our students that are, uh, you know, inspiring to do the program. What advice would you get them um, on how to be a successful student? Um, what are some things that they can do beforehand to prepare for this endeavor? You know, maybe from work-life balance, family, what are some of those different things that they should have in line that'll help them out? I think understanding the program and the scheduling a little bit better. Um, I was running my own company at that time and I would literally start at eight o'clock in the morning. I would try to finish by five to make the commute from LA to whichever campus I was taking classes. So if it was West LA, it would be a little bit shorter commute. From LA to Irvine was an hour and a half sometimes. So understanding that classes also end at a certain time. So, you know, you'll have to make those allowances. My wife was very understanding and you know, she took care of things at home when I was not at home. Um, read, absorb, ask questions. The professors here, you know, they're open to questions, but it all depends on who's gonna raise their hand or make a challenge or, you know, lead with a supporting uh, line, of, you know, line of thought. So don't be afraid, don't send that back, send the front and you'll get through it. Time flies, because it'll be that much fun. Yeah, this next question is for Larry, and I want to play on the part of the relationship between the instructor and the student, and I recently just got put on the mailer list that you have, and 
I want you to tell the our guests here a little bit more about the newsletter. It'll give them some in high, um, some insights on that relationship with the instructor and the students. Because I know a few of your, uh, you kind of mentioned it, a few of the people that are on there have graduated, you know, five to 10 years from now. So can you explain that, that little connection that you guys have just within entrepreneurship? Yeah. So uh, uh, in any program you do, uh, academic program or, or, Athletic program at a university, any university-based program, alumni are very, very important. I've, I've always felt like the alumni, the strength of our alumni network is the strength of our program. Um, and I've always thought of uh, classes as just the beginning of a relationship, not the end of the relationship. And so at the, at the first class session, I always capture people's personal Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo um, uh, email address so that I can put them on a, on a newsletter that I send out periodically. And, and I send it out probably now twice a year. It's not very often I send a newsletter out. But what I like to put in the newsletter are stories of their of other classmates who have gone on and started businesses or done something interesting. Doesn't have to be a multi-million dollar business. It can be, you know, we have people doing coffee shops, we have people doing ice cream parlors. We also have people doing pharmaceutical companies. I mean, it's amazing. And, and it's very encouraging for the students to see people that they knew in class who are now doing amazing things um, in the business world. And so it's been a really great tool. I, I've, got a, I've got about uh, 1,200 alumni on my list. And uh, when I sent this last email out, I had 850 responses. So the response rate was 71%. Uh, they, were, they are very engaged, very interested. It's a great way to stay in touch and, uh, and they enjoy it a lot. And I enjoy it too. It's a, it's a thrill for me to get to hear back from students and then be able to promote them and their business in my newsletter. So um, uh, that's what I do. And, and it's been very successful. I'd like to sort of leverage that now into some other things that we can do with them, some kind of a, you know, an annual meeting or a biannual meeting or something like that, where we get together uh, once this COVID is over, where we can actually see each other again and uh, do things together. So that's, that's I, I think alumni are very important. We need to stay in touch with our students once they graduate. Uh, this next question is for you, Steve, and it's in regards to the pandemic. Um, before we were in the, the hills of Malibu, or as you can see here, me behind my background in Calabasas at one of our remote campuses, how has teaching and application of our learning format changed since the, uh, the pandemic? Is there any big drop off? Or if at the very least, can you just explain the environment now that it is all digital? Well, just like students, professors, faculty, and staff had to adjust. Um, for me personally, um, I had already developed uh, these courses online. And so all my videos were already, I mean, all my lectures were actually filmed at the studio, plus all these different activities. I even wrote a couple of scripts and we hired actors to play out different scenes. So all of that is what we call asynchronous. So at, at the student's leisure, whenever is appropriate for them, they can, they can go through all that. It's all time for about 150 minutes a week. And so that leaves 90 minutes a week for the live session. Well, what, you know, these two classes involve teams. And so I basically do round table discussions. Each team has their own breakout room. And so depending on whether it's meeting a, a client in the core marketing class in the E2B project, or they're getting ready to make a decision in the simulation or whatever it might be, it's really more a discussion. And by having it in the breakout rooms, it's not like they have 20 other students in their same room uh, and they're, you know, do I really wanna talk about this? We have small breakout sessions. And so it tends to be, I think, more engaging. And all of us have been tasked to kind of modify what we currently did to match the new normal. And um, it's been going well. I remember uh, this last Christmas, uh, one of my students actually international went back to China and at Christmas time I got an email from her. She was already back in China. She didn't have to do that, but she was wishing me Merry Christmas. And so the idea is it is possible to stay very engaged with the students during the class and beyond, much to what Larry is saying. And it's because we have a real interest in the students. Pepperdine is known for its entrepreneurship spirit as George Graziadio and developing best for the world leaders. Can either one of you guys share a little bit more about that and what that means to 
to our students, Steve or Larry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, 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 you know, when I think about our, uh, Pepperdine, what I really think about are two Georges, George Pepperdine and George Grazia Dio, right? Both of whom were entrepreneurs. And so our, our bedrock, our foundation of what we do, of, of who we are is, is rooted in entrepreneurship and people who take charge, take control, face uncertainty, are creative and uh, place their own values, place their unique values into their business. And what I can say is that for an entrepreneur, what's great about entrepreneurship and starting your own business or even being the CEO who is behaving entrepreneurially is that you have a chance to take whatever it is you value, your, your take on the world, your world perspective, the things that are important to you and embed them in the business that you're, that you're starting. So for example, Nadine, the business she's starting, she's very passionate about uh, being eco-friendly and about being, uh, you know, having a social mission to what she does. And so she's building that into her, her business, which of course makes it more interesting to her. It also connects with her audience, with her customers. And uh, in the long run is actually better business as well as better for the planet. So, so what we try and do is, is uh, create uh, leaders who know how to take the values that they have and bring them into the business environment. And I think that's a very unique perspective. And if I could add to that, I think values is a key aspect. Um, sometimes when we go to corporate America, we're in an environment that really is about the next quarterly earnings push-up for some publicly held firms. It's not about the people. It's not about values. You're just getting through, trying to keep the scars as minimal as possible. And a number of us really espouse values uh, and morality in terms of how we interpret our daily lives and what we should do in return to what we're interpreting. And um, it's funny that uh, there's somebody I knew from uh, the Drucker School who wrote a, a book. It was really looking at publicly held firms that the leaders actually espouse values compared to those that are just about the quarterly returns. And the ones with the values actually outperformed the others. And because they were leaders, they're not what I call efficiency managers who are just there to collect the check. And it's all about them, it's about their ego, it's about power. And as opposed to other approaches that I think are very valuable. And the nice thing about this too, it isn't just me or Larry. We combined both from the faculty and the staff to give you perspectives that I think you can then self-select, you can then learn from that would help you along your career path. Yeah. If, if I could just add one story to this, that uh, is a story of a young man who uh, was in, in the special services in the, in the army. And um, he was a blast specialist. So he was the one who would, who would put the, the blast on doors and blow them open so that people could breach and come into to various places where the enemy was. And as a result of that, he had uh, severe brain damage and uh, had a traumatic brain injury. And when he was done with his service, he found himself in a hospital with about 30 different diagnoses from depression to uh, anger to all kinds of things that were going on in his life. And his life was spiraling down very quickly. And he made a decision that he was going to uh, change that around. And so he, he came up with a protocol. He found a protocol that had actually heals brain injuries. And he applied that to himself and actually did heal his brain injury and then started a foundation and then he went to Stanford to learn a little bit more about sort of creativity and design thinking, and then came to Grazadio School to learn how to build the business. And the business is called Brain Care. And it's a business that is totally centered on his values, on his experience, on what he really cares about. And it's an amazing business. Um, and so, so that's what I think is really exciting about being where we are is what we're seeing is students who come in with a passion for something and our job is to help them uh, execute that passion. And, and so, you know, we have lots and lots of examples of that that come through. It's, it's very gratifying. But I think that to answer your question, Joseph, I think that is really what makes, uh, you know, Pepperdine unique and what we look for and, and what, what making better for the world leaders is all about. I love that statement and I'm happy you shared it. This next question is for Nadine. Um, it's in regards to Doing the classroom work. Now, you know, everyone wants to do the MBA program. They're excited about it, but 
once you're in it, you actually have to do the, the classroom work. So can you explain, you know, from a student perspective, you know, what that experience is like, you know, from assignments to tests, you know, what can they expect when they start this program? Well, I mean, I had a, I had a great experience. I know that there are a lot of people that, you know, worry about the, the group projects and the, um, and the work that has to be, you know, done in a shared um, atmosphere. But I think if you come in to the program, like, you know, all of these gentlemen have already stated, if you come in completely committed and open to learning and wanting to engage, you will get tenfold out of the program. It is that kind of program. Um, what you put into it is really what you get out of it. Um, and if you, you know, are there just to kind of pass time, that's what you'll get. But if you are there to, to really be engaged and to learn something um, and share your experiences, um, I think that actually pulls people closer to you that have that similar um, characteristic. And, um, you know, each class size is so small that you really do, you can't hide. <laughs> so you have to be really, really committed when you get into the program. Um, but it is, you get, you get what you put into it, you get out of it. And um, I think the amount of work that's given to working individuals is realistic. It's balanced. It's not, you know, way too much. Um, and that was one thing I was worried about because, you know, we, some of us did have to earn a living during the day and and, and go to the classrooms at night. But um, I think they were very um, balanced curriculums and um, just enough to, to get what we needed out of it. It was, a, I think, a, a good experience in that way, in that regard. Thank you. Uh, this next question is for Juan. Uh, and now that you graduated the program, you've gone out, you're working with Pepperdine currently. What skills were you able to assess that you learned from when you started the program, graduated that like you saw transferred immediately uh, into what you're doing now and your future career opportunities? I think having a more analytic mind is something about doing the work and the research for let's say projects or you know different classes and truly understanding that um, technology is ever evolving. And I think we have to get adjusted to um, the pace of technology and how it's gonna affect not only our current work, but also our future work and being nimble and you know, making those necessary pivots to um, learn a new software. So if I were looking at uh, analytics, you know, I'd look at you know, platforms like Tableau or you know, even programming and SQL. Um, those are things that I never really thought about doing myself when I was running um, my finance company um, back in the you know, 2008, 2007, before I started my um, my uh, classes at Pepperdine, but I realized during the classes as well as you know going into the MBA program that data was something that I just sort of just relied upon to explain it explain it to me on what I needed to do to grow my business. But it wasn't until I started doing the research projects and working on let's say a capstone or working in, in a class like the E to B program, which was taking the classroom and then bringing in an external business into it to learn more about what are the challenges that they're going through and then collaborating on projects to figure out solutions to those challenges. Um, going into the library and looking at the databases, which kind of blew my mind, it's like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do these uh, search queries? Then I started to pick up little bits here and there that I was able to utilize for my business, which I was able to help grow you know, in multiples right before I sold it off. So I think the analytics portion is something that you'll develop, especially if you feel that it hasn't been tested, you know, through your career or if your career has just started, then it is something that you should really pick up and adapt to and accept. Because I don't think we're going to revert back to like sort of the prehistoric or industrial age time, you know, we're gonna to have to continuously learn and relearn and then start challenging uh, the status quo. Thank you. And uh, this next question is for you, Nadine. And um, 
we just kind of want to learn a little bit more about career professional development. And, you know, students are always interested in the return on investment, like how is career is going to help me, you know, get me to the next phase in, in my life. Can you explain what that relationship is like for our students uh, that join the program and what experiences they can have with them? Well, I know that not only myself, because I, I went in to, to really kind of um, develop more about what I was doing, but I did speak to a lot of my fellow cohort who really parlayed their degree into growing into the next level of business um, where they were. And what was important for them was um, by not having that master's degree, that really kept them from getting to that next level. So they, they needed to have that, um, not only for the, the key learning, but for getting to that place that they needed to be in their career. Um, but I feel like, you know, having a master's degree is like the equivalent of what that having a bachelor's degree was, you know, way back when. Now it's almost required, you, you, it's pretty necessary. A lot of people have them now and it's, and it's pretty necessary. I think if, if you're in any, you know, size of a business, even, even, even smaller businesses, just to understand how every aspect of the business works. Uh, even if you're not in every aspect of the business to know how the accounting works, you know, if you own that business to know how, um, you know, the logistic works, if you're, if you're, you know, selling consumer goods. Um, so having that can help parlay um, any person into growing in their career if they have that master's degree with, you know, the kind of curriculum that Pepperdine has and offers in this program. Thank you. Uh, this next question is for you, Stephen. And we have a lot of students that are interested specifically in the MBA program, but might not be completely sure on what route to take in terms of the concentrations. What are some opportunities that they can do to kind of Kind of steer them more in the direction of where they should go you know what what should they do in terms of finding out more about the programs and kind of helping them make that solution well even if once you join the program <clears throat> you're you're just taking core classes and so some of that experience i think might help formulate kind of a direction of where you want to go it's not unusual sometimes where i have students who were in finance and then they tell me i'm actually going to change <laughs> my direction into whatever marketing um, and so kind of goes back to you're being you're being introduced to and you're kind of understanding some of these topics at a deeper level if I could put it that way and also too you know in the full-time MBA um, you know two years or more of work experience so let's say you have five if you're in the FEMBA program you're gonna have probably more maybe um, the executive MBA even more. Um, all of all of this stuff, your ex your experience, your work experience, but also the classroom experience help formulate your perspective. I believe. Um, I think it really comes down to which one do you feel you're the best suited for that you feel just naturally inclined to to run into, right? Um, and, you know, just marketing, let me put it this way. There's no book in the world, no marketing book that covers everything about marketing. It's such a diverse field and it's very creative. And that's why one reason why I got into marketing. It isn't just filling in, you know, Excel spreadsheets. And you're continually faced with interpreting situations, not only now, but six months from now or a year from now or whatever, and continually going down this pathway. And the thing about marketing, for instance, is it's like you're, t you're taking a hike, whether it be along the beach, in the desert, on the mountains or whatever. And you can imagine if you've been on hikes, there are certain times when you might slip a little bit, you know, down a little thing, you might trip a little bit or whatever. And that's pretty normal when you go hiking, right? Same thing with marketing. It's not unusual at all for you, you spend all the time interpreting stuff, you have all this data and then you see what happens and you modify, you continue to improve because the only way not to trip, the only way not to stumble a little bit or slip a little bit in marketing and in walking on a trail is a standstill. And nobody succeeds either in hiking on a trail or in marketing or other fields by just standing still. 
Thank you. And this question is for Juan and Nadine, and I'll have you answer on it first, Nadine. It's in regards to the BSM MBAJ program. So that's the Bachelor of Science Management, the completion program, and you actually segueing into the MBA. Can you explain what that process is like? Like, how were you able to be eligible to complete your bachelor's and then also an MBA? So I didn't actually know I was going to do that um, when I initially joined Pepperdine. Um, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be ready for the master's, just the time amount of time that I had to put into it. Um, but you spend two years doing your um, undergrad at one of the uh, campuses, one of the, I think, five campuses that we have, and um, you're able to segue into it, which actually saves you money um, by entering into the uh, master's part of the program, and it cuts off an entire year of the master's program, full-time master's program. So it's a three-year program. And for anyone who's interested in just kind of knocking it out all at one time, um, I highly recommend it. I mean, we can see how quickly a year went by in just this past year. Uh, it could go by pretty quick. And I think when you're busy, um, it can go by even faster. So for me, I, uh, towards the, probably the 15th, 16th month of, of being in the, um, the BSM program, I decided I wanted to continue and, um, and then went on to finish my MBA. And because Pepperdine is so flexible with, you know, the, the campuses and where you can go and how it can work for your schedule, um, I did it at a, in a few campuses. I made it work for me time-wise, um, but it was a three-year program and I was able to get both of the degrees. Um, I actually simultaneously got an, a master's in dispute resolution during my master's program, that's how flexible the program was. So I actually um, received the three degrees in three years from, from Pepperdine. Um, but yeah, it could be very condensed and if you do it and schedule it properly and, and get it um, you know, all in, you can, do, you can do it in a matter of three years, which is great. All right, we're wrapping up into our last 10 minutes. So I wanna give an opportunity uh, for our guests to ask any of their questions as we do have our professors here as well as our alumni. So if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to uh, chat in the chat box or if you want to step out and just ask a question, definitely do so. Um, so this next question, alumni, you know, it's huge. Larry touched on it from an exclusive standpoint from the entrepreneurship Maybe this question is for you, Juan. Can you give us a little bit more background into what the alumni resources are? Like, what are the events? Uh, what can you expect, you know, on how to get in contact with some of these fine folks that have graduated the program? You can always reach out. We have um, the PEP Connect uh, platform that allows everyone to get connected, not only with alums, but also current students, as well as, you know, faculty. So it's a social media platform that we have here at Pepperdine. There's a ton of events, you know, from uh, recruitment fairs, you know, job career fairs, to mentoring, um, alumni gatherings, which we have num numerous times of year. Back, I guess, before COVID, you know, they would have regional ones or, you know, based on people in the Bay Area or in, I think there was Denver and LA, Orange County, which were predominantly lo located. Uh, what else? You know, I'm, I know that, you know, there are, Wonderful, you know, webinars that are being, you know, presented by the school, by the alumni department, by the different faculty and departments here at you know, Pepperdine, that there is always something going on. And I have to always check my calendar and see, you know, is there an event that I might be missing that could be a benefit to not only me, but also to the candidates I'm working with in the executive MBA program, but also to share with other, you know, staff members here to share with prospective students. Um, you're never going to, you know, not find an event. There, always, always, there is always something to do. And if it was like a carnival, this is a, a school of many booths. So look for it. You'll find it. If not, then help us to find it for you. And we're willing to do that. So it all makes uh, a chance for us to develop a deep relationship and find out what interests you and, you know, our ability to make it happen. Thank you. And this question is for Dr. Rapier. 
In terms of the real world application that our students get, it seems like that's the common theme of practical teaching. Can you give us an example of, you know, a project or something that was transferable uh, that students can kind of photographically image in terms of the classroom pr participation and project? Well, I would think about the E2B project we talked about earlier, and we've done several hundred of these, and uh, it's ranged from very small companies. Uh, in fact, recently it was a small retailer in Marina del Rey, but also large companies like Disney and Tabasco and so forth. And what I like about it and why I think it's very applied is that I bring in my tools and other things I developed over 20 years ago as part of that project. And these companies are not doing it just for a feel good moment. Uh, they actually are looking at or challenged by something that they could really benefit from a, an outside pair of eyes looking at it. And so um, it starts off week two where you're actually meeting the client and the client and his team is you know explaining what they're looking for and so forth. And so you literally are what we used to say, learning tonight what you apply tomorrow. And so it's very hands-on. This is not just all theoretical stuff. This is like, no, we have to create a three-year detailed marketing plan that acts like a tactical roadmap to the detail that instructs them exactly what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And this is budgeting um, and so forth and so on. And we did a client, Cisco Technologies, it was a $4 million project. And Cisco actually invited the top two teams to present at corporate. And so you're learning a lot of subtleties. Uh, what's it like to deal with a client? Not the first time when everything's about them and how great it is, but the second time when they're starting to critique what you're presenting or whatever it might be. Um, that's all part of the real life experience and each team is competing. So it's like what we call the agency pitch process in the advertising business where each team has received an RFP request for proposal. And then each team has to respond to that request and develop and present, which should be hopefully the best marketing plan of the entire class. And, uh, this is a fun question and feel free for Juan and Nadine to jump in. Give us a favorite memory uh, now that you guys are graduated from the program, something that just sticks out from your experience um, over the MBA program. Uh, feel free to jump in either one of you. Well, I will share mine. Um, probably my greatest memory, of course, all of the classes, the, the key learning that I'm actually applying now and I'm I'm using actually a couple of the people that were introduced to me by Dr. Cox um, as consultants in my business, which is so cool. But probably one of the greatest memories I had was the uh, study abroad in Paris, um, learning from um, executives in the- Where was that? Space. Where was Paris? <laughs> <laughs> so, that was an incredible trip that I will never forget. Uh, and we spent an afternoon at Veuve Clicquot, which was stunning and unforgettable. And, um, but all that I learned was equaled by as much fun and beauty that we saw there. It was just incredible. I will never forget that. That was my funnest experience of my three, three years. Well, thank you. That was awesome. I love it. Juan, <laughs> <laughs> you care to uh, top that one? Paris is pretty tough there. No, I, no, that's, <laughs> that's, I can't even compete with that, especially when you went to, you know, the booth. Did you bring back a case of champagne and such? You could not believe how much stuff I brought back. I couldn't even <laughs> get it on the plane. I was like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? But yes, I packed pretty heavy on the way back. Yeah. I, I think, you know, for me, my uh, greatest memory is just graduating with my friends mm -hmm. who I consider brothers and sisters. And we still cherish that memory of, you know, being on the Malibu campus and celebrating and, you know, taking pictures and such. So I think that in itself was the best capstone of my experience at school because of, of developing, you know, these relationships with people that, you know, two, three years ago, I just didn't know. And then realizing that I don't think I could have made it to the end without them. It's inspiring to hear that, that community, 
seems like that is another common theme is going through it together. So I'm happy you guys definitely expanded on that. I, um, I want to give our professors one final uh, bit of advice, one final word before we do finish our, our time here together. So I want to start off with uh, Steve, just, you know, what are some things that you want to close out for our guests here today uh, that'll ring true to who Pepperdine Grazidio Business School really is? Well, I think just being here and, and kind of experiencing this is a good sign for you because ultimately we want you to make the right decision that's right for you whether it be our school or another school, the more informed you are as part of, your, of the discovery process, looking at the different programs in the environment. Um, you really can't look at it just from a website. I think the more you can engage with folks like Joseph and um, Candace and others, uh, the better. And um, uh, once you make that selection, be ready to be engaged, be ready to take advantage of all the opportunities that present themselves. You know, I, uh, I don't know that I have a lot to add to that. I think that, um, you know, we try as best we can as faculty to, to uh, break down the processes that, that, we want, that you need to learn to accomplish the goals that you have for your life and to pass them along to you in a way that will be useful to you. I, I really like the thought that you walk away, students walk away with something that's real and tangible that they can use um, that, that will change their lives. And, and I think that all, we as a faculty and as a staff, all of us are working together to, uh, to give students an experience that is worth the time and money and the effort that they're putting in. And, and I, I have to say that there's uh, innumerable examples of people who, whose lives have been changed uh, very significantly by the classes that they've taken at Pepperdine and by the relationships they have with people. And, and what's interesting to me is the, the relationships that people tend to take away are always, are, tend to be those first ones, that first week. My son's best friend is from that first week and currently he's working on a business with somebody who is in that cohort as well. So it's, it, it's interesting is that how important that first uh, in, intersection is with the students and, and how they, how you bond and you stay bonded. And, and we can do a lot of alumni programming and all of that, but really that informal bonding is, is, the, is much uh, more effective and stronger than anything we could ever put together as an organization. So um, it's a great option. It's a, it's a, it's a great school to consider. And, and I think um, uh, it'd be worth, you know, putting up high on the list if you're considering several. Thank you all for your candor, especially our professors. Again, I want to say thank you to Dr. Cox and Dr. Stephen Rapier for being here today, as well along as our alumni with Juan and Nadine. Um, on behalf of Pepperdine Grazadillo, this concludes our panel discussion. Um, from Shawnee and myself, Joseph, we want to say thank you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Be safe out there and go Pepperdine. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Perfect. Bye. Thank you all so much. Uh, so the session was recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel shortly. <laughs>